What a figure of a, a battlefield leader. I was a division commander for him during uh, Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Most obviously was enormous intelligence and experience, so he understood what was going on. I think secondly, uh, an ability to, uh, through force of personality, organize events and shape them to his will. So he was a force of nature without which that campaign could not have come out in such a splendid short-term victory. Clearly, um, his finest moment uh, was uh, trying to unravel the complexity uh, in uh, Saudi Arabia and sort out what are we gonna do about uh, retaking Kuwait. And we went into a, um, a, a briefing room and Schwarzkopf stood up in front of every general and admiral in the joint battle force and personally briefed the plan of attack on Iraq. And as he pulled the curtain off this map and we saw what we were about to do, there was an electric thrill went through the group of us uh, when we recognized for the first time nearly in American military history, uh, we were gonna use maneuver and indirection and deception uh, to achieve our purpose. That was Schwarzkopf's contribution to the U.S. Armed Forces. One of the most central characteristics of Schwarzkopf, in my view, was he was immensely demanding on his immediate subordinates. Now, I wasn't an immediate subordinate. as a two-star division commander. It was a three-star uh, group that were uh, being really torqued because he wanted things done. Part of that was because his early life experience was as a captain and lieutenant colonel in combat in Vietnam, and I think a lot of that generation said our generals failed us. They didn't look out for soldiers. They allowed us to end up with 58,000 dead and 300,000 wounded. So I think Schwarzkopf came into the, um, as a theater commander said, I'm not going to let happen to these soldiers of mine what happened to us in Vietnam. So very demanding on his direct subordinates, but incredibly caring for soldiers. There's no nuance in direction to General Schwarzkopf. He knew what he was trying to, to do. And by the way, he's a lot of fun to be around. He's an immensely energizing figure. Uh, but there's no pussyfooting around, and you're going to get a direct feedback on, on your performance from uh, General Schwarzkopf at every level. He was like that as a battalion and brigade commander, too. Care for your soldiers, intensely demanding on, a, on his own subordinates to make things happen. He was uh, wounded twice in combat as a, as a captain and, and lieutenant colonel. So, you know, he came into this uh, final theater command job understanding the real stakes of warfare, uh, the bloodshed that's involved in uh, soldiers. One of my favorite memories of him is the night before I put my long-range reconnaissance teams into Iraq. Uh, was, they were going in just after dusk, uh, 150 miles north into Iraq. These tremendous teams of uh, five soldiers, going to be covert surveillance. Uh, General Schwarzkopf flew up there uh, to bid them farewell. I listened to a quick briefing on where they were going, and I've got a terrific picture of him, this giant of a man standing among my much smaller LERP uh, teams uh, just before they left off in the combat. He choked up and could barely talk, saying goodbye to him. That a lot of things in life are just practice, and it's not practice playing the game, it's practice with the elements of being good at a game, whether it's football or combat, you name it. And the, our cadets graduate with a tremendous set of tools. After four years here with academic, uh, character-related, you know, routinely telling people frank, candid responses to questions, whether they're tiny questions or big ones, so I think you leave West Point with a tremendous uh, basis to be effective as a combat leader. And then we go on and give them another year of training. Um, you know, the most important thing in the world I did uh, leaving West Point, bar none preparation, was ranger school. Uh, but also these branch basic courses. So I think the cadets ought to understand, uh, ought to remind, somebody needs to remind them how good they are as they graduate. 
and then to take the tools that they've got and capitalize on those. If you don't have a personnel like General Schwarzkopf, don't act like General Schwarzkopf. I mean, we've seen people with, who are um, introverts, who are deliberate and careful and uh, and how they go about it. And they're also frequently effective battle leaders. So be yourself, uh, but have a great deal of confidence. If you, if you finished up four years at West Point, and by the way, we got you at age 17 through 21 already with your character darn near fully formed and already having played team sports and done well academically. Um, these uh, young people were graduating, men and women are as good as the country can produce. It's important to read history, and that includes military history, and, it, and to think deeply uh, about these situations and then try and apply them to terrain and to real foreign cultures and to real enemy situations. So study and preparation is a good bit of it. Uh, if you've gone through this in your mind a dozen times, on how to deal with insurgency in forested areas uh, or insurgencies in Arab cities, uh, you're going to be prepa better prepared to do it when you see it for the first time as a lieutenant colonel. Uh, you got to uh, study and work at our profession. Now, I, I think probably the, the other thing I, I would suggest is that, um, uh, that you have to uh, be willing to uh, get credentialed. You, you simply have to get the building blocks uh, to be a professional in what you're doing. Part of the credentialing isn't just military schooling, it's going to the right assignments. So if you want to be a first-rate cavalry officer, you'd better make sure that you are a platoon leader, a troop commander, and you serve as a major in a battalion. You can't say to yourself, well, look, some of these are sort of pedestrian bureaucratic postings. You've got to stay in a field and get good at it. It helps to be smart. <laughs> and, you know, uh, General Schwarzkopf is unusually intelligent. Intelligence is pretty commonplace among the senior battle leaders. When you look at a battalion and brigade commanders on up, these are some pretty sharp uh, men and women. But uh, he's unusually intelligent. So it, it, allows, it, it allows you to focus on the things that are worth worrying about. And now I think the other thing about General Schwarzkopf, so you've you got a lot of experience and he did all the way up through uh, command of tactical units at every level. Um, then there are procedures you understand, and you don't have to recreate 90% of the tasks that present themselves to you, saving your creative effort for the things that are new and different. And so again, I think experience, hard work, training, practice, uh, reading military history, uh, certainly in General Schwarzkopf's case, allowed him to look at this piece of ground. You take two campaigns um, in the Italian theater of operations in World War II, in the Korean Peninsula from 1950 on, even though there were some anemic attempts in those two uh, campaigns to use envelopment or indirection or surprise, as a general statement, they were D minus operations on creativity. Then you get the Desert Shield, Desert Storm. It was unbelievable that we were able to take down what in essence was the fifth largest military force on the face of the earth and with a 30-day air campaign followed by a four-day ground attack. And that was in large part due to the creativity that General Schwarzkopf brought to the battlefield. Before we had the reinforcement in which we double the size of the force in Desert Shield, I, you know, I'd come up with a plan in which I was absolutely confident that uh, my division could punch through into Kuwait at the most defended point of the line. And I laid it all out to General Schwarzkopf. I said, I'll bet my bottom dollar we can do this. These people are badly trained, badly organized, don't have the command and control. But what we ended up doing was taking this 24,000 soldier division and moving it a couple of hundred kilometers west. So we attacked across trackless desert in the, starting in the middle of the night with zero opposition and got into the, completely into the rear areas of the enemy uh, where we just shattered their uh, ability to fight as a cohesive unit.
because we were 200 kilometers behind their main battle units when they first encountered us. Again, that was Schwarzkopf, and part of that comes from the Vietnam experience of saying, I understand what bloodshed is involved in direct battle action. We can do that too, we're pretty good at it. But General Schwarzkopf has spent a lot of time crawling around the mud as a captain and lieutenant colonel under fire. General Schwarzkopf is, um, um, uh, he's, uh, first of all, he's got a ferocious temper. Uh, he's not to be strewed around with. Uh, he's uh, definitive in his viewpoints. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. Having said that, he's also a huge amount of fun to be around. So as a general statement, he uh, comes in and, and looks at possibilities and provides huge energy to organizations. And, uh, and then he comes up with the right answer. Uh, there's no getting around it. If your commander knows what he's doing, he or she is doing, then anything's possible. The rest of it's secondary, but with General Schwarzkopf, the secondary aspect was he's a lot of fun to work for. First of all, you gotta say, look, you know, what's the purpose here? You know, what is the objective we're trying to achieve? Uh, he'd get the thing organized and then go in, and for, first thing you gotta sell uh, in terms of a battle plan is your own forces. You gotta convince them you're doing something smart, this is doable, uh, it's going to come out okay, trust me, and, uh, and that helps if you're a credible figure like General Schwarzkopf. We, we thought he knew what he was talking about to start with. Then when we saw the plan evolved and presented to us, it was just overwhelming. We said, oh my God, thank God, this isn't going to be battering our way up the Italian peninsula, ridgeline by ridgeline, or the same thing essentially which happened in, in the Korean peninsula. This was an attack by indirection massive deception of amphibious assault in the sea to draw off the uh, maneuver forces and creative use of air power and electronic warfare to paralyze a command and control system to end up achieving a battle purpose rapidly with minimum loss not just of u.s life but also the enemy force which essentially unraveled completely because of this astonishing battle plan one of his major contributions wasn't running the U.S. forces, which is reasonably easy to do. If you can't get a bunch of Army and Marine and Special Operations and Navy and Air Force commanders at two- and three-star level to do what you want them to do, there's something wrong with you. So he had done a superb job planning, creating, building the U.S. force, but he was also in charge of a coalition that was astonishingly diverse. And I think he took that responsibility as his number one mandate particularly with the Saudis, to bring them along. So he was willing to spend huge amounts of time listening to people. I used to call it leadership by luncheon. We had weekly, bi-weekly lunches where we'd meet. And you'd look around the room, it was such a panorama of people in Arab dress. And we had Mujahideen out of Afghanistan there in cross cartridge belts and from all over the face of the earth. And we'd endlessly talk, bringing people along, trying to get them to sign up for what we were trying to do. A lot of that, again, was leadership and a part of General Schwarzkopf to say, we can't achieve this purpose without these allies. Something I might add that was shockingly lacking in the next incursion into Iraq. But, but Schwarzkopf understood that. This is an allied effort. You know, we, we had an Egyptian core, a Syrian core, a Saudi Arabian two-division force, National Guard and active. And all that was brought together uh, uh, by General Schwarzkopf's insistence that this was an allied operation.